तत्परम पर्याय विद्महे ज्ञानलिंगेश्वराय धीमहि तन्नो गुरु प्रचोदयते ओम ओम योग मश्राक्त स्वामी गीतानंद के विगुर महाराज के जय Welcome back to another session where we are looking at Savitri Pranayama and its associated practices and we have been looking at the different thalas in which the Savitri can be presented and we have seen how the different thalas of the Savitri Pranayama have different type of effects when we are looking at the different thalas and sometime back i had answered a question which was about how to time it because the timing is easy to say 1 second 2 seconds half a second but actually each one of us is an individual and our own body weights have to be taken into consideration so i had suggested that we could use our own pulse as a methodology and as in general we talk about the cardiac cycle being 0.8 seconds that is 75 beats in 60 seconds so 60 divided by 75 is 0.8 that is the time taken for one full cardiac cycle all the events happening in one cycle systole diastole of the atria systole diastole of the ventricles they happen in that 0.8 seconds if your heart rate is 75 per minute it changes if your heart rate is slower for example your heart rate is 60 is going to be one second for the whole thing to happen that is why a slower heart rate is a healthier heart rate too slow it's not healthy i get the extremism but then as your heart rate gets faster say you are having a heart rate that is 120 i'm going to the other extreme that means in 0.5 seconds in half a second all the events in the cardiac cycle have to happen and that is where it is not good for the heart so when we are talking about the pattern just slightly less than a second is a quite a normal physiological count so it doesn't have to be exactly one per second uh, because that may put a bit of strain on many people just slightly faster than a second so in your mind you could think around 75 counts for 60 seconds that's just a mental image but it is individualized in the sense of if your heart rate is regularly you are resting heart rate now i don't mean the heart rate when you are jumping up and down i don't mean the heart rate when you are upset and shouting at everyone and screaming your head off that's different your heart rate when you are resting it's called the resting heart rate so a good way to know it is in the morning when you get up and you're going to get out of bed check your pulse and you have an idea what is your heart rate that is quite a good indicator of your basic metabolic rate so resting heart rate is a good one and it changes uh, the heart rate changes from second to second okay so uh, just because you had 70 you know two minutes ago it doesn't mean it's still going to be 70 it could be 90 for all you know and it could be 60 for all you know depending on what you're doing but it gives you a basic idea the second thing that is asked and it's quite a logical question that is often asked and um, the question is that say somebody is breathing at the rate of 1 or 1.5 seconds per count really slow so they are breathing like a 1 2 3 4 <laughs> as opposed to somebody who's breathing with a count 1 2 3 4 so you say logically the person who is doing it slow one two 
and the person doing it faster one two three four that this person has done four in the same time it takes for the other person to do two so then the confusion comes if i do a six three as one two three four five six whole two three and if i do a six three as one two three four five six hold two three the question comes are they the same because the logical mind says no logical mind says no because what the logical mind says is the time duration is not the same but that is the problem with logic because logic is looking at it with a framework an externalized framework saying this is one second whereas for the body it's not about this is one second but it is about what is my one second what is my rhythm what is my time scale what is my time frame and that is why if you are harmonizing to your own bio rhythm and what feels natural to you so if your natural rhythm is more like a within 2 3 4 5 6 go for it if somebody else's natural rhythm is within 2 3 4 5 6 that is their rhythm and for somebody else it may be within 2 3 4 5 6 hold 2 3 out 2 3 4 5 6 that's that person's rhythm so what we need to understand is let us not be comparing the rhythm of one person with another and that is why the benefit is not just you know the exact pattern but is actually the code of the number the numbers are like a number lock you are unlocking the number lock so it is your own rhythm and that is where personalized practice is so important that it has to be personalized to the individual more than generalized when we are teaching in a class and you have 20 people you are going to count in a generalized way it is like when we talk about the brahmari pranayama the same issue comes in because some people do it as mm some people do it as mm some people do it as mm and some people are mm and some are, mm and like dr ananda what is correct those who know me know my answer all of them are correct because what is correct for you doesn't have to be correct for somebody else and what is correct for somebody else doesn't have to be correct for you there is no one size fits all in yoga and that is why the yoga has to be for the individual but the individual needs to be sensitive to themselves now this is not that ego that you are trying to cater to in a cafeteria approach where the consumer is always right Huh? it's not about that it's about the individual huh? the self so coming back to even the brahmari what i like to tell people is hum it at different pitches so you know you may be humming it as mm, see how it feels inside mm, see how it feels inside does it vibrate your whole cranium especially when you use the shanmukhi mudra or other things the moment you close out your ears hmm, you can feel the inner vibration much more so in the shanmukhi mudra we are closing the ears and the other senses another day on that but what you are doing is that you want to have an introspective awareness of what's happening inside you and what you vibrate is going to be different than somebody else's vibration frequency So coming back to the savitri. So when you are doing it, when we do it in a general class, we give a lead and you know give a count that should be okay for most people. But in your own practice, you may find yourself counting faster or counting slower. Swamiji used to often suggest that 
people could use a metronome. A metronome is a device which gives you a count at a regular interval. And many musicians use it to maintain the rhythm of their compositions. It is also a good idea. But make sure the metronome is set for your <laughs> frequency. The problem is you if you set the metronome as one per second and your frequency is not one for one per second, you are you are going to find it straining. And the idea is that you should stretch yourself but not strain yourself. I'm going to repeat that in case you were sleeping. I am repeating it. Stretch yourself, don't strain yourself. Because stretching is good, but straining is not. And that is why it is important to stretch our limits constantly without harming ourselves. The first rule of yoga is ahimsa. And ahimsa starts at home, which means do not be violent to yourself. Because many people go by this crazy slogan, no pain, no gain. Huh? And no pain, K-N-O-W, uh, pain, K-N-O-W, gain. Huh? Mad people. Sorry, gangster yogi came up there. You don't have to know pain in order to gain, okay? That's not the yogic approach. The yogic approach is you do it because it is to be done that way. You are fulfilling your purpose. That's all that matters. It's not about pain is there or pain is not there. Hmm? Because, you know, again, this old statement that pain may be there, but suffering is optional. And I think that is very important to understand that suffering, dukkha is actually suffering, not pain. People translate dukkha as pain. It's actually suffering. And suffering is always optional. You can choose to suffer and you can choose not to suffer. Again, the choice is yours. Coming back. We have been working on the Anuloma Viloma and we have seen how that practice can be brought in and from the head down to the feet, the experienciation through initial visualization of a warm golden flow of prana. And then as you breathe out on the exhalation, you have the cool silvery apana coming up and out. And yes, initially it is a visualization. As you become more sensitive to yourself, you will start to experience the flow. And that is why the experience of the prana apana will come as we become sensitive. It is like, you know, when a child is a small child, it doesn't really know who its parents are in the sense of, as far as the baby is concerned, the mother is just the provider of food and the cleaner of nappies, diapers. Now, the mother may be a PhD in nuclear physics. But that child is not yet sensitive enough to know the other aspects of the mother. Same thing, when we are doing the practices, often we have to develop our sensitivity. And yes, Arvindaji, you hit the nail right on the head as usual. It is definitely our Prakriti. The Prakriti, our Vata Pitta Kappa, and the constitutional elements, the seven constitutional patterns that we have, will definitely be related to the timing in Savitri. And that is why it is definitely going to be there. Because Savitri is based upon harmonizing. Now, there are other practices that are meant to deharmonize. In the sense of what do you want to do is shake up the person. That's a different issue. So, somebody who has Vata, you want to change it by using anti-Vata. Or Pitta, you use anti-Pitta. Or Kappa, you use anti-Kappa practices, principles, dietary aspects as a Patya and Apatya. This is the approach that is used. But when you want to harmonize and when you want to help that person become themselves, at that point, we have to definitely go by the Prakriti of the individual which is based on the dosha principles. And again, people say, oh, the three dosha is Ayurvedic. I am like, you know, this is, this is crazy. It's like saying your kidney is only a nephro nephrologist territory and has nothing to do with physiology or anatomy. 
It's not like that. Just because the nephrologist is the specialist in the kidney doesn't mean the anatomist or the physiologist cannot learn about the kidney and know about the kidney and work with the kidney. So the problem is we have said, oh, these concepts are Ayurveda, these concepts are Yoga, these concepts are Vedanta, these concepts are Mimamsa. And we make it watertight content and people argue about this. People argue, they say the Kosha concept, the Pancha Kosha or Pancha Maya as some traditions call it, they say that's not yogic, it's Vedantic because it's in the Taitriya Upanishad. I'm like, you know, where have you people been? On some other planet? Huh? Do, you, do you belong on Mars and Venus? Come on, use, use your heart and understand it is all about the same principle. It's all about the same life. It's about the same universe. It's just different people saw it differently and put it in a context. And that is why for me, I will never, I will say yes, Tridosha is a concept that you find in Ayurveda. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist in yoga. People try to make yoga nothing. They say, oh, yoga borrows its philosophy from Sankhya. I'm like, come on, why you are you differentiating it? Tadeko Vashishta, everything is one. It is just, it is, it is like saying, oh, you know, we, you should not try to talk about gravity. It's only the physicists who should talk about gravity. Come on, we are all influenced by gravity. We all experience gravity in different ways. Tad Grahya, Patanjali uses the word Tad Grahya, which is gravity. What, what happens is that the gravitational pull is so strong. Patanjali talks about it. He says the pull of the gravitational aspects, what happens is when you get close enough to Kaivalya, the gravitational pull of Kaivalya will pull you in. You don't have to do anything anymore. You have got so close, Kaivalya pulls you in. Gravity is there. You could have said, no, 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 gravity only belongs to Newton because that... Uh, apple came and fell on his head. Huh? Please understand. We have to understand that there are concepts. So, Tridosha is an Ayurvedic concept used in Ayurveda. It is used in Siddha also. So, then people argue which came before Siddha or Ayurveda. Huh? Seriously, we are so mad. We are a living being and all of these concepts are part and parcel of us. So, Prana, Apana. And these are very, very strong, very strong concepts we need to keep in mind. That the pranic flow and the apanic flow are these equal and opposite energies. And we are visualizing the prana coming in, the apana going out. The prana coming in as you breathe in, the apana going out as you breathe out. Another word for inhalation, the energy coming in is prana. Another word for the energy going out when you breathe out is apana. These are all synonyms, euphemisms. These are concepts that keep on coming back in different ways. The Anuloma Viloma, one is this method. Then there is part two. And in part two, what we do is that we split up the energies. So now what we have is we have the prana on the right side of the body and apana on the left side of the body. And what we do now is, and pay attention if you have not been paying attention. As we breathe in, we feel the prana coming up from the feet to the head. So here now, you are experiencing the prana coming up like this. And the apana going down on the left side from here to here. Again, you are the clock face. And this is clockwise. Energy moves in clockwise direction. Pradakshina. This is why in Indian temples, we always go in, we circumambulate the temple around the deity in the clockwise way. And if you meet most of the Indians who are very traditional, even if they turn any place, they always turn clockwise. This anti-clockwise doesn't come into their system. It's very interesting. The clockwise turning is an energy flow. And that is why even the energies in the chakras they are moving clockwise. That's a different story for another time. So here what we are doing is, the prana is coming up on the right side, up here, and the apana is going down on the left side. Again, there's a very nice video of this on YouTube. You can find it. And if you don't find it, send me an email or a message on Facebook and I'll send you. But first try to look for it. 
after a whole day of teaching, I get a question about that same topic by somebody. And I'm like, the least you could have done is watched my video. Gave him one more like. Huh? <laughs> Increase the TRP ratings. It's interesting. You have just talked the whole half an hour in the morning about that topic and then somebody comes and says, Dr. Ananda, can you please tell me about this? Huh? I'm like, the least you can do is go and watch my video and then if you don't understand it, for God's sake, ask me, I'll be happy to answer you. Huh? It, it's amazing. In the six-month course at the ashram, so often, three months of teaching, four months of teaching and somebody will ask you a question, you're like, seriously, where have you been for three months in my classes? It's okay. Nothing wrong. That's just the joke joke part. And then you answer it. You, you put the person in the direction. So if you don't find the video, first look for it. If you don't find it, ask. Don't just immediately, Dr. Ananda, do it for me. Nobody can do nothing for you. You have to do it for yourself. Fine. Prana flows up on the right. Apana flows down on the left. So prana, apana. Prana, apana. And you have this amazing flow happening. And what is happening? There is this clockwise movement starting. Hmm? This clockwise movement. And if you look at that other YouTube video, whiteboard video, where I've explained these practices, I have explained how this clockwise movement is the same clockwise movement that you find at the Yoga Nidra practice in the Gita and that tradition. And what you are doing is that you are creating this beautiful clockwise movement. You are creating a closed circuit of energy using the flow of prana and apana. And this is where harmonization is happening. It is a it is a very interesting one. Yes, Manjari, the prana moves from feet to head on the right. Okay, here that is where it's different. And yes, that means you're awake there. Prana is moving up on the right and down on the left. This is different from the first one. First one was prana down, apana up. Here now it is a totally different practice. It's a second variation. But we are still working with prana and apana. And we are still working on harmonizing and balancing. But a new methodology is used. So what we are doing is that we are moving the prana up on the right, down, the apana down on the left, and you are creating a beautiful sense of a circuit that is an energy circuit in the clockwise direction. Prana and apana. And what this is doing is harmonizing again the equal and opposite energies. So the equal and opposite energies are being harmonized and balanced because the goal is balance between them. A dynamic sense of balance is what health is. And that is why the prana represents normally, when we are talking of prana, it is the equivalent of the pingala nadi, the active principle, whereas the apana will be the equivalent of the ida nadi, the deactivating principle. So the positive and negative flux Yes, Nitya. Ida and Pingla and Prana and Apana, they are related. Same as Ha and Ta, the solar and the lunar. So whenever we are talking of these, we are talking of these equal and opposite energies that you are trying to harmonize and balance for the sake of polarity. Polarity is life. Loss of polarity is death. So you want to have polarity, which means a balance between these energies. What is the balance? The balance between the protons and the electrons. The balance between the cations and the anions. Always at the cellular level, if you understand cellular dynamics, there is a constant attempt to maintain balance. And there is always something shifting the balance. It's called an electric potential. Hmm? The cells have an electrical potential. We are, an, we are a solar being. We are an electric source. Okay, People forget that. Ah! Electrical potential in my cell. Ah, yeah, yeah. You are an electricity source. And you just, you don't know it. And that's why sometimes you shock people hmm? with your stupidity. But anyway, a lot of gangster yogi coming through. I have to stop channeling him today. Keep him separate. Huh? We are all bipolar, okay? That energy is being channelized. That energy is being harmonized and balanced for the sake of polarity. So what you are working with is these opposite. Pingala is the activation, the solar. Ida is the deactivation, the lunar. The solar energy is linked to the prana. 
the lunar to the apana. These are representational concepts for us to understand the same energy expressed in different ways. So at cellular level, you are looking for balance. And then you come into your autonomic nervous system. The sympathetic and parasympathetic, you are constantly trying to find a balanced harmony. And that is why Shushruta, in very beautiful terms, a couple of thousand years ago, tells us what is health. Samadosha, sama agnescha, samadhatu malakriya. That the balanced harmony of the doshas, the agnis and the dhatu, it is the balanced state that is health, a dynamic state of balance. And that is what we are doing here. Now, before I stop for today and tomorrow, we will continue this as a practice, both the first and second variation of Anuloma Biloma, we will do as a practice tomorrow. But this energy is coming up. Please do your homework and watch that video, that whiteboard video. You will leave comments, nothing wrong in it. Don't, just don't abuse me, okay? I get enough of that anyway. Right side going up, left side coming down. Prana, Aparna. Prana, Aparna with a held in at the top and a held in at the bottom. 6, 3, 8, 4, it comes. So immediately we have our intelligent students. You mean, Dr. Ananda, that Prana is only on the right and Aparna is only on the left? And I'm like, what do you do with such people? <laughs> Nowadays, what I do is that I start telling you all of this before you even think about it. Yeah? Because what happens is that we are always constantly, constantly having this issue that, you know, you have to preempt the questions. So the new questions come. Yeah? What do we do here? Yeah, what do we search for Nitya, YouTube video? Polarity uh, and Bhavanani. And I think it's on the Saita page. So CYT, uh, Polarity, Geetananda, Bhavanani, Saita, and it should come up as a YouTube video. If not, I think I shared it a few days ago, but I'll share it again today on my, on this Facebook page so that, you know, you can have a look at it. What happens is we think that prana is right, apana is left. So there's no prana on the left and no apana on the right. This is again the logical mind which creates the problem. This left-brained logical mind which thinks boxes are different. The right brain says everything is connected. That is why the right brain uh, is more feminine. The left brain is more masculine which has all its boxes. And you know man's brain and boxes. There's a beautiful humorous video on that. No, it's not that it's divided that way. We are doing this practice in order to experience these energies. But the prana and the apana are right down, as I said, at your cellular level as cations, anions. So there's no right side and left side right down. There are cells on your right also, cells on your left also. The cells on the right will also have prana and apana as cation, anion. And the electrons that make up you wherever they are, whether your head or toe or nose or fingers, wherever those electrons are or in the universe, are going to have electrons and protons. But these practices are meant... To sensitize us to experience the prana and apana flowing through us. So these are sensitization techniques. You remember I told you the other day about asanas being simulation techniques. All the yoga practices are simulations so that you can experience it. Similarly here, these are simulation techniques to help us experience prana and apana in us. But prana and aparna are there in every cell, every atom. So don't think it is only right and left. The right and left is for us to sensitize ourselves. And that is what yoga is all about. Sensitizing ourselves to the inner experience. So that we can know it. So that we can feel it. And so that we can understand it and experience it when it happens by self-effort. See you all later.